Struggling with physics? You have come to the right channel. This is Physics is Easy with Mr. Jesse. This tutorial is on Chapter 27, Section 5, The Compton Effect. For this topic, we are going to describe the Compton Effect and apply the Compton Shift Formula. The Compton Effect was discovered by Arthur Holy Compton and for this discovery he was able to win a Nobel Prize in 1927. In Compton's experiment, he directed an X-ray into a block of graphite and once the X-ray hits the surface of the graphite, it interacts with the electrons in the graphite. Now he was able to observe that some of the photons were actually scattered and his observation showed that the wavelength of the scattered X-ray is much greater compared to the wavelength of the incident x-ray now since the wavelength is directly you know inversely proportional to the frequency then as the wavelength increases the frequency is going to decrease so therefore the frequency of the scattered x-ray is much lesser compared to the frequency of the incident x-ray since the energy of the photon is equal to the Planck's constant multiplied by the frequency, therefore, the energy of the scattered X-ray is much lesser compared to the energy of the incident X-ray. Again, this is due to the fact that the scattered X-ray has a greater frequency or lesser frequency compared to that of the incident X-ray. So this means then that the incident photon actually lost some of its energy and this energy has been converted into the kinetic energy of this electron here so this electron recoils just at, as if it was struck by a classical particle so just imagine a billiard ball being hit by another billiard ball that's what happens when the electron is being hit by this incident x-ray photon now the loss of this energy due to the fact that there is a change in the wavelength is the context of Compton effect. Now let's have a different look at Compton's effect through this animation. So we have here we have here the X-ray photon and this X-ray photon hits the orbiting electron and in turn the X-ray photon gets diverted into a different direction and we call that scattered photon and on the process of doing so we have the electron being scattered as well in a different direction. So this is the animation of Compton effect. The difference in the wavelength of the scattered photon and that of the wavelength of the incident photon is known as the Compton shift and it can be expressed in the formula delta lambda or the change in the wavelength or the Compton shift is equal to the final wavelength or the scattered wavelength minus the initial wavelength or the wavelength of the incident photon and that is also equal to the Planck's constant divided by the mass of the electron multiplied by the speed of light multiplied by the quantity of 1 minus cosine theta where theta is the angle between the directions of the scattered and the incident photon. So let's look at that closely. If this is the direction of the incident photon and the direction of the scattered photon is this so the angle between them is theta here are some final notes on Compton scattering the quantity H over MEC is called Compton wavelength now if you notice H which is Planck's constant divided by ME or the mass of electron multiplied by the speed of light they are all constant and therefore it would lead us to a constant value and that value is what we know as the Compton wavelength it has a value of 0 0.00243 nanometers which is very very small compared to that of 
the wavelength of visible light. In fact, Compton effect can be observed if the wavelength of the incident photon is very small. So that is why X-rays are very appropriate to observe Compton effect. Now the Compton shift depends on the scattering angle theta and not on the wavelength. So the change in the wavelength or the wavelength shift or Compton shift is dependent on the angle, not on the wavelength. Also, the experiment that is being done by Compton strongly supports that light is a particle or the photon concept of light. Now let us solve a simple problem on Compton effect. It reads, x-rays of wavelength uh, 0 0.2 nanometers are scattered from a block of material. The scattered x-rays are observed at an angle of 45 degrees to the incident beam. Question A, calculate the wavelength of x-rays scattered at this angle. So we are given the initial angle or I mean initial wavelength, and that is equal to 0 0.200000 nanometers. This is our incident wavelength. And we are also given the um, angle at which the beam is scattered, the angle between the incident beam and that of the scattered beam, and that's equal to 45 degrees. We're going to solve for the wavelength of the scattered x-rays, and that is equal to lambda f. So we have our equation lambda f minus lambda initial, or the change in wavelength, is equal to the Planck's constant divided by the mass of the electron multiplied by the speed of light multiplied by the quantity of 1 minus cosine theta. So let us just substitute the values and we could simply solve question A. So we are solving for the final wavelength or the scattered wavelength minus the initial wavelength. Let me just write 0 0.2 times 10 to the power of negative 9 is equal to the Planck's constant which is 6.63 times 10 to the power of negative 34 divided by the mass of the electron that is 9.11 times 10 to the power of negative 31 kilograms multiplied by the speed of light which is 3.0 times 10 to the power of positive 8 Quan multiplied by the quantity of 1 minus cosine of 45 degrees manipulating this equation would lead us to the scattered wavelength or the final wavelength to be 2.007105 times 10 to the power of negative 10 meters. Now you have to take note that you have to include as many significant figures as you can because the change in the wavelength is actually very small and we could round this off to zero or we could express our final answer to 0 0.02 i mean 0 0.2007105 nanometers and you could check how close the final wavelength and the initial wavelengths are we have solved question a for part b Compute the fractional change in the energy of a photon in the collision. Recall that energy of a photon is equal to the Planck's constant multiplied by the frequency and we could express frequency in terms of C over lambda. So that is frequency. So therefore, if we are going to solve for the fractional change in the energy, then it is actually the ratio of the change of the energy in the photon and that of the original energy. And the change in energy of the photon is just equal to energy final minus energy initial divided by the initial energy of the photon. And we could expand that so that for our final energy, we will have Hc divided by the final wavelength minus Hc divided by the initial wavelength divided by Hc over the initial wavelength. And this part here is our initial energy this is also our initial energy 
of the photon and this part here is the final energy of our photon. Then substituting the values, we can get the fractional change in the energy of the photon to be negative 3.54 times 10 to the power of negative 3. And this is dimensionless since it's energy divided by energy. At this point, kindly work on the web assigned task entitled Compton Effect. And that concludes this video tutorial. Once again, always remember, physics is easy with Mr. Jesse.